Welcome friends, in this video we will be talking about the antisense RNA technology and, and its use in the plant biotechnological purposes. As a tomato ripens decreases in stored starch content and loss of target pressure are factors in the ripening process. However, one of the main contributors to this process is thought to be the changes in the structure of pectin which is present in the cell wall. An enzyme called polygalacturonase or PG correlates best with the softening of the tomato fruits. The activity of this PG increases during the ripening, mainly degrades the pectin of the cell wall thus changes the construction of the outer membrane of this food. In an immature tomato there are low levels of PG encoding mRNA which is the messenger RNA which code for the protein which is PG or polyglucuronase. Now this is the DNA part and this is the sense DNA, this is the antisense DNA strand and RNA polymers can sit on and produce the mRNA molecule from this DNA. Now the DNA is transcribed into mRNA from one strand of the double helix called the sense strand. The PG mRNA is then transported outside the nucleus to the cytoplasm where the code uh, is translated into the PG protein by the ribosome. Now this is the ribosome, this mRNA will be translated to the desired proteins which are the polyglucuronase. Now these are the PG proteins. As the ripening process continues, more and more copies of PG mRNAs are made in the cell nucleus resulting in the PG in the plant which leads to more ripening of the food. Researchers wanted to find a way to delay the ripening process in tomatoes to produce a ripe fruit that remains intact for extended period of time. The use of antisense RNA technology allowed them to do this very important task. Normally when the DNA is transcribed into mRNA, only one strand of the double helix is issued or used. This strand is called the coding strand or the sense strand. Now this is the coding strand, in this case it is called the sense strand and as in the opposite of the sense it is called the antisense strand or the non-coding strand. Researchers used the information about the sense strand to create a gene in, in, in reverse orientation also called the antisense gene. Now you can see here if we produce an antisense gene that will looks like this. So there will be no difference in the antisense region but the gene which code for here we c as you can see here uh, the gene which which actually uh, coding for uh, the sense region will be changed right so in this case we can see these are the antisense region this is the sense in that case so it just inverts the situation in such a way that the sense sense genes becomes antisense and the antisense becomes sensed note that just like the beginning of the dna strand this mRNA are complementary and in, in, in reverse orientation. Now here in this case it is from the 3 prime to 5 prime the actual uh, sense uh, strand and in this case it is from 5 prime to 3 prime. Now the result of the antisense mRNA being added in the RNA RNA complex is unstable and is also more difficult to transport out to the nu from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. To be effective, in most cases there must be a larger number of antisense mRNA compared to the sense mRNA. This increases the chance that an RNA-RNA complex will form. Now as we have seen that RNA-RNA complex are formed and also some of these RNA molecules are released and they will be translated to PG proteins inside the cytosol. 
and some of them are forming the unstable RNA RNA complex. Some PGM RNA less than 1% will irreversibly still make it outside the nucleus to be translated by the ribosome. However, the amount of PG protein that will be produced is not enough to do this usual job, which means pectin will not be degraded. The end result is a tomato that softens more slowly and has some processing advantages. It is more resistant to cracking, mechanical damage and also the fungus. This is all about the antisense RNA technology and I hope it will help you. Thank you.